Hey, how's it going? Let's pick it up in Acts chapter 27 and read verses 1 through 12 today. When it was decided that we would sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius who belonged to the Imperial Regiment. We boarded a ship from Edramidium, about to sail for ports along the coast of the province of Asia, and we put out to sea. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. The next day we landed at Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. From there we put out to sea again, and passed to the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. When, he had sa when we had sailed across the open sea off the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving at Nidus. When the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete opposite Salmon. We moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens near the town of Lassia. Much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was the Day of Atonement. So Paul warned them, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete facing both southwest and northwest. So Paul has been on trial many, many different places, and uh, maybe he could have gotten set free, but uh, he definitely was innocent for sure, but he appealed to Caesar. And so now he's going to go to Rome, go to Italy there. And so we start following his journey and really the, the big points of these verses one through 12 verses one through eight. The big point there is that obviously the journey then begins and they start sailing and traveling and that the journey ends up going, uh, kind of a little bit slower than they were hoping. And then verse nine through 12, we kind of see then a transition point there where they start to make a decision whether they should stop or continue on. And so verse one, uh, we see a little bit about they're beginning to travel. Uh, you know, they he's handed over to a centurion named Julius. And so there's other prisoners that are on board as well. It's not just Paul. So there's other people. And verse two, um, they kind of start to begin to travel. Verse three, then Paul actually is allowed to uh, go to his friends that they might provide for his needs. So that's neat. He's able to see a few people there, which is good. Verse four, then we just kind of see a bunch of different things. Verse four, it says the winds were against us. Um, verse five, they, uh, uh, sailed across the open sea. Then verse six, there, the centurion founded an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. So now they're kind of transitioning from, uh, from ship to ship. Verse seven, we made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving at off Nidus. Uh, when the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete. Uh, verse eight, we moved along the coast with difficulty. And so you just see kind of over and over again that the travel is really not going super well. Um, they're all safe and fine, it seems like so far at this point. But the problem is, is that they're losing time. Why is that a problem? Verse nine, it says much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the Day of Atonement. Um, and so when I was reading this, it seemed like it was sometime uh, in September, late September or something like September 20th, somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, so <clears throat> that means then that winter is coming. And so that's obviously a problem. And apparently uh, during that time period, it was going to be very dangerous to to sail. And so that was a problem. How much they had lost time uh, was not only a problem just because obviously you want to, you know, not lose time just in general, but because there's a certain window then where sailing is, uh, uh, is better and safer. So verse 10 men, this is Paul speaking, men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. So now they've lost all of this time and Paul is now warning them that, hey, this is going to be really bad. And uh, what does the centurion do? He doesn't listen to Paul. He listens to the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship, which to me is like, I don't know, fair enough. I don't know if I'd listen to a prisoner over a, 
you know, the pilot and owner of the ship, you know, so uh, that's just me personally, but I guess Paul was, uh, ended up being right, but um, for some reason they didn't think it was going to be so bad. So the other option was maybe, you know, just kind of stay in there for the winter, that sort of thing. Verse 12, it says, since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail on hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete facing both Southwest and Northwest. So they're hoping to sail on, keep going for a little bit because they deemed the harbor not suitable to winter in. So uh, not exactly sure what the reasons are for that, why it would be not as good to winter in, but um, that's the decision that they go on. And so they're going to kind of continue to travel and we'll pick that up next time uh, with what happens uh, in that storm. So let's pray and we'll close this out. Lord God, I just thank you and praise you. Thank you for your scripture and your word. I just pray that you would speak to us today. Lord God, guide us and lead us and uh, just be with us today, Lord God. I pray a blessing on each one listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.